Before filling out that job application, here are three things worth knowing before you purchase Final Fantasy V Pixel Remaster. Hello Internet, I'm David, video editor for RPGFan.com, and I'm here with reviews editor Alana Heggs to help you get off on the right foot in Final Fantasy V Pixel Remaster. A lot of folks are very interested in the black sheep of the Super Nintendo era of Final Fantasy titles, so let's get right into the things that are most important to know. So Alana, what would, what's important to know about the job system? Um, so it's a really good evolution of what Final Fantasy III on the Famicom started out with. So there's an expansion to the number of jobs you've got. There's 22 in the original Final Fantasy V and the same 22 carry over to this remaster. Um, and you get them all through the story, all except one. You start off with a freelancer class, which is pretty similar to an Onion Knight, if you've heard of those. Um, and then you get your first six is like the initial warriors of light from the original Final Fantasy one. So fighter, monk, thief, black mage, white mage, red, uh, not red mage. Um, it's one of the other jobs. Um, but you basically get your basic tools from the get go and the rest of the crystals as you go around to pick them up, you get more and more jobs. So it mirrors Final Fantasy three in a way, um, but it just evolves on that premise. So the biggest difference with the jobs in five is that you are basically not penalized um for changing jobs so you are allowed to swap whenever you want to um you just pop into a menu pick the character you want to change jobs on and then you're off and ready to go on whatever role you want um so and i know with final fantasy 3 at least on the ds version um you used to have to take like a health penalty or a level penalty on that job for like 10 fights this one like you just slip into whatever you whatever you want whatever you want to go into you go into it whatever level you had it on stays at that level and then that's it really you're ready to go um one of the coolest things as well about five's job system is that every job you've got has one innate ability so for example um ninja comes with throw which is an action which allows them to throw weapons or Think of Edge from Final Fantasy IV, uh, so they can throw shurikens, they can throw scrolls, or they can throw spare weapons you've got lying around. And then they've got one empty job, job slot. Um, every single job but Freelancer only has one slot. Freelancer has two slots, um, which makes it the most customizable job. And you learn skills by leveling up every job. Um, and to do that, you just basically have to fight enemies and you get something called ABP. Um, which is like a second experience points value basically and every job has a different number of levels so knight has like seven levels um dancer has three levels samurai has four levels i think and every level they go up they learn a new skill so black mage is a really easy one so every level is like black mage level two you can use spells on any other class up to black mage level like level two so you can use like firaga from I don't know when you hit level five on black mage but if you want that skill set on a different class put it on them and then you can say like your knight can cast like death or blazaga at that point <laughs> um, so yeah it's really really cool and really easy to play around with um so you can do whatever you want really and i think another really great thing about the system is you're not not only you're not like penalized you're never forced to use a particular job like there are obviously really obviously easy setups you can have like two physical damage deals and two spell casters is probably like the ideal way to go but um i think final fantasy 5 is really famous for its annual charity event um where people get like four randomized job roles and they see how far they can get into the game or see what they can beat them with and people have come up with ridiculous strategies to just beat the game <laughs> with like four blue mages or three dancers and a summoner or something like that and so every single party is viable in some way um it's just figuring out like the right tools and what you need to do it with basically so it's it's a super rewarding system uh, especially for 1992 and it's amazing that it still holds up as well as it does today mm -hmm. well and that uh, adds to the replayability because obviously you could like you said play through the game a few times with a few different uh, builds and see how it goes yeah, pretty much. Like I played, I varied jobs a little bit with my playthrough, um, but like generally I stuck to like two damage dealers and two spell casters or like a support spell caster and a healer or a damage dealer. Um, but like 
I, I immediately want to go back and do like all blue mages or something like that. Something really <laughs> ridiculous just to have some fun with it. Um, yeah, I've seen some playthroughs and I'm just, I'm really curious to see how it all works out and how it changes the difficulty curve as well. So that'd be really interesting. Yeah, I, there's so much, there's so many possibilities. Yeah, and when they have the uh, extra four new jobs added as well, I, I can't remember which version they were in, but um, it was the Game it, it Boy was Advanced. added on top of them. Yeah, it was the Game Boy Advance yeah, one. It. Yeah, they're not in this version, obviously. And I think, like in particular, something I don't know how well received they were. Like I was looking at, as you do, you look at like tier lists and see what people's <laughs> opinions are on things, and it's like Necromancer and um, Oracle were quite low down. But I feel like. I do feel like if Five is missing a job, it's like a gunner job, and Cannoneer feels like it would fit in, at least if I'm just going to cherry pick one of them, that would yeah. be a good one. So, yeah, I'd like to think they'd add them. I don't think you're missing out on too much, because, you know, 22 jobs is quite a lot, and if all of them have got, like, anything between four to seven skills, then I don't know how many unique playthroughs <laughs> you can get through with that number, yeah. but yeah, um, it would be really cool to see them added in, especially because they are unlocked at the end of a secret dungeon as well, so yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I remember uh, it, it took quite a while to get to them, so it's, yeah, like you said, you're, you're not necessarily missing out on them, and no, yeah. I haven't seen them uh, added into too many people's uh, favorite build lists, so <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, don't, no. I don't think it's a, a big loss. Yeah, definitely. That'd be cool, though. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one of the things that Final Fantasy V is famous for is the localization. Uh, back in the 90s, when uh, on the in the Super Nintendo era, the Square thought that Final Fantasy V was just going to be too difficult for a Western audience, <laughs> so they just didn't, uh, <laughs> didn't decided not to localize it. And uh, that brought about... Uh, uh, the fans coming around and, and doing their own translation and it's famously one of the like first big fan translation games uh by uh so i mean, I mean if you were on the internet and got a got your hands on a rum you were able to play it but uh, after that there was a couple localizations there was one done by uh, square for the ps1 era uh, the final fantasy anthology which is uh, famously for being pretty bad <laughs> and <Yep>. then <laughs> Uh, there's the, uh, the the fan translation in the GBA, um, which I think is considered the best of the three. But uh, just curious what your opinion was on this localization for this uh, version. Um, I think it's really, really good. Yeah. Um, so there are kind of the thing with the pixel remasters is that they seem to have done different things with each pairing. So one and two seem to be based on the original or well, not the original, the um, Game Boy Advance versions but three and four potentially have been reworked slightly and I don't have a point of reference for five. Um, it feels very in line with like the spirit of the GBA version, I feel. So whether they've like um, adapted from that, which makes sense because, you know, the PlayStation 1 version, as you said, is not brilliant. It's got bad load times and, you yeah. know, Final Fantasy 3's local, or Final Fantasy 6's localization even, um, was a little bit ropey because it was based off the Super Nintendo version anyway on that same collection. Um, yeah, I, I think that Square want that GBA version to be the base and then whatever they've worked off of from that, I think, yeah, it's just done a really good job. Um, it, it's a really great localization. Um, it's funny. It's really, there's a ton of pop culture references which really surprise me. Um, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's just, it, they've done a really really nice job i mean five doesn't have the most intricate story anyway and it's a lot more light-hearted than four or six or even three really um and so i think that lends itself to kind of a really easy title to ease into in terms of localization um but yeah i, th I think it's a really good a really good solid port for sure um it reads really well um no errors um, I would say the font is not ideal. I got used to it, but it's it's fine. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a really easy, good localization. Yeah, e easy way to fix that too. The font, yeah, uh, if, yeah. Getting in, I, uh, that was the first thing I did when I started up my Final Fantasy V. Was I went in and um, yeah, you just go into the the resources and just kind of copy and cut out the English bundles. Yeah. And then copy the Japanese ones and then just rename them. And then you got some some pretty good fonts. So uh, anyone else, because uh, I, I totally agree, the English font is terrible. So <laughs> highly recommend everybody uh, jump over and make that change. 
Definitely. Uh, one of the yeah. things with uh, retro RPGs is that they can often be uh, a little bit uh, difficult in knowing where to go next. Like uh, famously, there's a lot of times where you're not really there's not a lot of hand holding in these old RPGs uh, <laughs> sometimes. So I'm curious, um, in your opinion, is this uh, a, a game that may be good to have a, a game guide as a handy reference, or do you think it's pretty straightforward on where where to go and and people will mostly be able to figure things out on their own? Um, I think some parts of the game it's a little bit vague where you want to go. Um, one example I'm thinking of is when you're going around. Um, in the final third of the game, you have to go around and collect some tablets and you have to remember where certain locations are. Um, but the world map's changed slightly, so you don't necessarily know where those places are. And some places are completely new, so you have to figure out where to go. Um, I think one instance I got slightly lost in is you're supposed to go and talk to Sid and the game doesn't tell you that he's moved from the airship hangar to the library of the ancients or the other way around. Oh. So it's really, there's really minor yeah. things. I certainly think it's a lot better than um, any of the um, Famicom titles or the NES titles. Um, but um, I think in particular, it's less having a guide for navigation and perhaps for some of the jobs. Because um, if you want to know about utilizing blue mage and chemist i think that unless you're willing to sit there and like fight every single enemy and see if they attack you or figure out every single mix combination for chemist um i think that's going to require a guide just to try and get the best out of it because otherwise you're going to be using up money resources and a lot of time with um chemist or you're just going to have to like fight every single enemy and comb every corner of the map in the blue mage um so i think those are the two biggest instances i would say there's a guide um a guide would probably be required um or, i mean it depends i think one of the best things about five is that freedom and that like customization and that replayability so like some people would a probably absolutely love going into the deep end and figuring out blue mage but i think there's a lot of newcomers who'd come to the game and go oh chemist is not very good and then we'll just sideline it because <laughs> there's not like any real guidance in the game about how to use it um but it does encourage that experimentation um and yeah i think it's just going to depend person by person i don't think it's a bad idea for those two jobs in particular to have something handy and also if like you're not brilliant at job based systems like i'm not amazing at them like getting a guide to see some recommendations it's never going to be a bad thing. Um, but I think the fun of it is trying stuff out at least for a bit and then going like, oh, what do other people have to suggest? But yeah, in terms of like navigating the world, it's only really a couple of instances where you might get a little bit lost, but it's not the dense, the world map's not as dense as some other RPGs and it's not as, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think. I mean, Final Fantasy III on the NES or the Famicom certainly seems quite tight for a world map on that era um so i think maybe it's similar to that um but certainly it's not the it's not the worst it's definitely not the hardest game um and it's not but it's not the easiest final fantasy either i'd say it's moderately <laughs> challenging at times like certain bosses in particular will give people a little bit of trouble um there's a couple of like instances where you really need to use specific strategies and again like don't unless you like really know what you're doing don't go into a boss with like four black mages or like four fighters because <laughs> <laughs> there are some that will punish you for not having like spells or scrolls or items so yeah mm -hmm. it varies i think it depends on the person um but i think most people will not struggle too much basically yeah it's not even a bad idea to track down uh, a digital version of the instruction manual because i know in yeah. that era like 18 bit and 16 bit a lot of the important information was actually in, in the instruction manual. Like if you picked up the original Final Fantasy, it, it came with all the, the maps of the world. Uh, yeah, that's you right. wouldn't even know the, the statistics of the equipment in game. Like it doesn't actually tell you in the game oh, God, yeah. what anything does. It's all in the instruction manual. It's like a big thick like 40, 50 book pages. So uh, yeah, so again, like no no shame in picking up a guide or even going through the manual ahead of time it's uh, it's a, it's a game from a different era so it, it requires some different uh, strategy so De definitely yeah i mean yeah i think I, I i did a little bit of both like i tried to figure out most jobs and i sort of knew what i wanted and i think 
even when I was like years and years ago, like reading out about Final Fantasy as I was like finding out about the game. So I was like, oh, what jobs does Final Fantasy V have kind of thing? And you get like a feel for what's good. And it's particularly interesting because like there are jobs like Red Mage that are really, really good in Final Fantasy One and Final Fantasy Three. In Final Fantasy V, Red Mage is pretty terrible. So if you're going in <laughs> yeah. with that, if you've played like one and three and you're like, oh, I'm going to use a similar team as that, like Red Mage becomes useless once you hit like a third of the way through because it can only use like level three black and white magic, which I think barely even extends to Cura. So you're going <laughs> to run out of use for that very quickly. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's not a bad idea to have one to hand at all, but it, it's per person to person preference and it's perfectly doable without a guide. Awesome. Any uh, final thoughts to that, uh, or any tips, tricks that maybe will help people enjoy the game more? Um, obviously, we've already touched on the text font. Um, I would say as well, um, the with, same with the other Pixel remasters. Um, the map does stutter a little bit in full screen mode, um, so we'll definitely yeah. try and go for borderless if you can. Um, but otherwise, really, um, ooh, no, I think I'd recommend just really trying out every job as you go and see what you like um mm -hmm. there are definitely some that are better than others and some you do get a lot later than others um but there's some moderate optional challenges as well that if you're into that kind of stuff then you know omega and shinryu are famously i think two of the hardest optional bosses in final fantasy history um i did not try either of them um but i really just think go in like there's there's a bit of a i don't want to say a misconception about five you said black sheep at the beginning david and i think that's a really good way of putting it because like four and six are both very story heavy um five is very much it's got a story and it's more than an nes game but like it's very basic even with named characters and named villains and things like that um but I don't think it's any less because of it. I think it's real strength is in that job system. So I think that's where most of the fun's going to come from. And so I think just throwing yourself in and trying to make your own way out of it is a really good thing to do and just have fun, really. I think there's nothing else I can say <laughs> other than change that font and <laughs> change that yeah, window right. <laughs> mode. Yeah, I think that yep. the Pixel Remaster for five is absolutely the definitive version and the music is so good the music i mean it's consistent throughout all the pixel remasters again the music is brilliant yeah. so yeah I, I i i really don't think you can go wrong with this release at all like five is one it's maybe the one game that needed this the most other than three because we only have the 3d one six does as well but at least six has the original version which I know it's got like a funny translation of the time but like <laughs> yeah it is it, it varies but yeah i think just throw yourself in that's really all i can say get that text fixed get the border window borderless window and yeah have fun yeah exactly well i want to thank everyone for watching our video and if you're not yet convinced on whether or not you want to pick up final fantasy 5 you can read alana's full review of the pixel remaster over at rpgfan.com